What's up, people? How y'all doing? I'm back again on my uh, channel, and I'm ready to do yet another video, this time uh, on the last uh, University of Hawaii men's basketball game. And, oh, man, that ended in just a bunch of heartbreaks, but there was a lot of heartbreaks in that game against Cal State Fullerton at home. I'll go ahead and say right now that Hawaii ended up on the losing end, 52-51, to 51, in the final 15 seconds. <clears throat> I took a little time to do this video because I was still pretty upset with how that game turned out. And I do think that Fullerton got away with murder in that one because they had that in your face defense. And I think the refs, and I do believe that the refs had to share some of the blame in this one because some of them were pretty blatantly incompetent on some of the calls. I'm going to say that right now. But anyway, before we get started, I uh, just want to say to subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I'm trying to get out to the workforce. I try to upload this on my new channel of Matthew V's UH Sports. Uh, I'm hoping to possibly monetize that channel, but I don't know. I got a long way to go. And of course, the two home games left. I don't really sound too optimistic right now because they're currently in a tie for third right now after that loss. University of Hawaii is. But, I don't know, two more home games and then this torture will be over. But I had a lot of hope after the Diamond Head Classic and it's just being squashed in chunks. I'll tell you that right now. But anyway, let's get started. Okay, Cal State Fullerton. I was really, really looking for Hawaii to come out with a lot of, with a lot of fire and and such, a, a lot of fire and determination to be able to make up for what happened on the road when UH fell to them in overtime despite twenty two turnovers committed. And uh, although UH did better overall with only with only fourteen. 11 of those came in the first half. And that first half was just downright disastrous. UH started out hot with two straight triples from, I believe, Kamaka Hepa and Noel Coleman. And after that, they only made two baskets from that point on, ultimately being held to just four field goals made and a season of 15 points scored after the first half. And Fullerton took a pretty much a double lead into that second half, and UH wound up down 31 to 15. But the fact that we only made four field goals in the first half is a telltale sign that something is really, really, really wrong with this team. It's always been ever since the, the first game, it's or not like the first or like the first game really. It's been like a case of good half, bad half. And a lot of the times UH has to play catch up and then they end up winning or losing by and they end up losing by little by a little bit, or they win by the skin of their teeth, or somehow they manage to pull out some wins that are that are by convincing margins, or after they've uh come from behind and tonight was one of those games where they had to come from behind after that dreadful first half with four with four field goals made and 11 turnovers committed and really to do that against a team like Fullerton is totally inexcusable and uh, as far as a grade goes I would have to give them a C because that was a game where UH really could have won and should have won, but the fact that they missed so many shots in the first half was totally inexcusable. They were four for 24 in that first half. And, uh, but I also did mention that the referees had to share some of the blame too, 
I was not lying at all. And I'll tell you why. Because I do believe that Cal State Fullerton got away with it. They kind of abused their defense and got away with it. They had this in-your-face defense and and really, that just kind of really frustrates the other team and forces them to rely on the three-point shot. And I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, that kind of defense should be banned from the sport of basketball because it's a real injustice. And when you're held to no field goals, when you're held to that low amount of field goals in a half, that's an injustice. And when you're held to no free throws in a half, that's an injustice, even if you're the opposing team. And there are times where the opposing team, and sometimes that's been us, where we've been held to zero free throws all game long. But I do believe that the officials had to share some of the blame because they just let Fullerton play with that kind of defense. And also, sometimes when you fight fire with fire, it doesn't work out. And I even, excuse me, I even got... Uh, some B-roll here that I took with my phone. I even got a shot that Cody Williams, that UH's Cody Williams put up, which was a missed three-pointer. And I do think that that Fullerton got away with the with the goaltending. And as you like right here, as you can see on that shot, Williams puts up the three. It's no good. And the Fullerton player touches the basket at the same time that the ball comes down. And that right there is blatant goaltending. But did the officials call anything? No. They only call it if they see it. And really, I believe they saw it, and they just did nothing about it. Really. That is the kind of... That is the kind of blatant officiate... That is the what I mean when I say blatant incompetence by these damn officials who don't call anything. And UH, they still managed to find a way to, to get back in contention. Their shots started coming back. Uh, Samuto Vea had another great game, uh, but it's all negated because of those last 15 seconds that, you're, that I'm going to show you right now. And really, the University of Hawaii, they had three chances on that last possession to upset Cal State Fullerton, and that ball just didn't behave. And really, I'm saying this right now, Fullerton, they won it, but they did not deserve that at all because Fullerton let them get away, or excuse me, the referees just let Cal State Fullerton get away with that kind of defense. You know, it's, you know, I could go on and on about why I feel that if, that we should really have lawyers in basketball, but that's not going to help anything. I mean, fortunately, it didn't hurt us as bad as it could have. UH is still tied for third in conference play. Uh, I do believe that, but that was a game that I really do think that we should have won, and I really thought they were going, and I expected them to win. And they came out with fire, and that was all put out right away. And because of the incompetence of the officials and the fact that the Big West is a conference that's scratched for cash and Really, I think it's about time that we found more competent officials and not just guys that just make calls whenever they see it. Because that's the kind of thing that can really anger you, especially when when they put on a, a big show, when UH has to really scrap and claw back. But they kind of shot themselves in the foot with only – with the first half with only four buckets made. And quite often when you score less than five field goals in a half, you're not going to win that game overall. But still, they demonstrated their resilience. That was good. 
But the fact that they only had, they had 11 turnovers committed and four buckets made in that first half is not going to go unnoticed to anybody, myself included. And uh, still, I do believe Cal State Fullerton got away with it. They that which makes which solidifies in my mind that they did not deserve this win. But whatever, season's winding down. UH has got to think of something to put a complete forty minutes together. But I'm not going to lie; I thought they did that already at UC River at UC Riverside. But really, I really hope that UH can figure something out because Beyon Riley wasn't available due to a lower leg injury. But whatever, I mean, I really hope that they can pull something off because they're coming on the road. They have yet to put three wins in a row since together since the start of the season. And that's bad news, especially with the conference season winding down and the tournament around the corner. I had a lot of hope after the Diamond Head Classic, but that's just been completely fizzled out. But still, I do believe the officials have to share some blame here on why UH did not lose, did not win this game. And despite winning the second half by 14, all that's negated. And Cal State Fullerton, they only made two triples all game long. And, uh, but the fact that UH just found a way to get back in it, they did so with their resilience. And, uh, and of course, Kamaka Hepa with four fouls, but he also, but he also led the way with 16 points. And Samuto Veo, a monster game with 17 rebounds and 12 points. But still, all that's moot because of that terrible first half. But I really hope that they can turn something around because the guy that I was looking for a big game from, Jovan McClanahan, he only had he only had uh uh, he only had five points, one for 11, or six points, rather, but he was one for 11 from the field. And uh, that that's terrible. I mean, and I do believe, and like I said, the refs do need to share some of the blame because of, because they kind of let a lot of things that Fullerton did get away. So, Really, I don't. I really don't have much other to say. So. So anyway. So anyway. So anyway. All right, guys. That's it for today. Uh, you'll see some more of my B roll to end this video. And I'll see y'all soon. Ball upon everyone. Oh, yeah! Yes! Number 32, Donald McSquire, 21, Grayson Harper.